Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Quijano. Thank you for joining us. Officials in Vietnam are racing to finish preparations for the second summit between President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. This is a live shot from Hanoi, where Kim is set to arrive any minute now. He spent more than two days traveling by train from North Korea. The president left for Vietnam on Monday. He is expected to arrive Tuesday morning. Before he left, Mr. Trump said he expects to have a, quote, tremendous summit. CBS News foreign correspondent Ben Tracy reports from Hanoi. After an elaborate send-off in Pyongyang, Kim Jong-un rode his dark green and very slow armored train for more than 50 hours through China to reach the Vietnamese border. He apparently wasn't in a hurry, and neither, it seems, is President Trump. I think we'll have a very tremendous summit. We want denuclearization. Before departing for Hanoi, the president said he's no longer insisting that North Korea quickly denuclearize. I'm not in a rush. I don't want to rush anybody. I just don't want testing. As long as there's no testing, we're happy. North Korea has not tested any weapons for more than a year, but there is clear evidence the regime is still producing nuclear fuel and working on its weapons program. The first summit in Singapore ended with a vague commitment to work towards denuclearization. Despite President Trump tweeting that North Korea is no longer a nuclear threat, the regime has yet to give up a single weapon or even disclose how many it has. On Sunday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo seemed to contradict the president. Do you think North Korea remains a nuclear threat? Yes. But the president said he doesn't. It's not what he said. They have the capability of detonating a nuclear device. Chun in Bum is a former lieutenant general of the South Korean army. Have you seen in the past eight months any step North Korea has taken to denuclearize? No, I have not. But there is a saying in Korea that you cannot have a full belly with the first spoon of rice. So I think the first summit was the start of a long process that we will have to go through. CBS News State Department reporter Christina Ruffini joins me now from Hanoi, Vietnam. Christina, President Trump is expressing a lot of optimism about the summit. What do you make of that? Uh, he is. You know, it's obviously he's going to express, uh, ex express optimism because he's coming all this way. They've made a big deal about this, and he wants to have a positive attitude. But he's also managing expectations. You know, you heard him say as long as North Korea doesn't test any more weapons, that he'll be happy, and he's happy to slow walk this a little bit. And part of the problem is, is the U.S. and North Korea still haven't really agreed what is is. What is that goal? What does denuclearization mean? Does it mean just in North Korea or the entire Korean Peninsula? The North Koreans have been putting out messaging saying, Okay, you want us to denuclearize, you have to do something compensatory. You have to denuclearize the, the, you know, the peninsula. You guys have to give up your nuclear weapons. And that's not something that we think the U.S. would be willing to do. So the biggest stumbling block here is, if you will, the first one, which is they're coming here, they're going to start talking about denuclearization. But first they have to get on the same page as to what that means and how they're going to go about trying to achieve it. So do you think the majority of their time is going to be spent then, Christina, just establishing that, agreeing on what definitions of various terms are? We don't know. We don't know what the majority of their time is going to be spent doing because right. we still haven't seen a schedule for the summit. Secretary Pompeo on the Sunday show said, you know, his his chief envoy, Stephen Began, and his counterpart, Kim Young Cho, was still working out the details. And I think that's accurate. You know, uh, the president will meet with Vietnamese leaders on Wednesday night. We are assuming he and the North Koreans will meet on Wednesday, but we haven't seen a schedule. We don't know if that's the case. We don't know if it's going to be one day or two days. And we don't know what exactly they're going to be talking about. It's not clear whether everyone is on the same page or even what book they're all reading. And so is it clear at all what each side is hoping to gain from all of this, Christina? Well, we think so, although the ball may have moved a little bit on the U.S. side. Look, the North Koreans want sanction relief, right? They want to be ha able to have access to the world markets. They want a cure for their failing economy. And one of the thoughts in bringing uh, the North Korean leader to a city like Hanoi is to say, look, this could be your future if you get on board, give up your weapons, and, you know, we'll drop sanctions, and you can, you can have all this foreign investment. This could be your future. When he was in Singapore, he went for a walk in downtown Singapore, this very modern, glittering city, and there has been ovations that he is 
more willing and more interested in becoming a member of the international community than his father was. However, you have to wonder if they're really willing to give up their nuclear program. This is a program North Korea has invested in for the last 50 years. It's really tied to national pride and national identity. And now that the U.S. has maybe, President Trump specifically, has maybe stepped back from denuclearization, saying, well, as long as they don't test any more weapons, you know, we're okay, we'll keep negotiating. You have to wonder if the North Koreans are thinking there might be an opening for them to, you know, have their yellow cake and eat it as well. Hmm, very clever, Christina. Well, President Trump and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo uh, seem to be contradicting each other on whether North Korea still poses a nuclear threat. How could that affect the negotiations, you think? Well, it goes back to that first point. It's really hard to negotiate if you're not all on the same page about what the parameters are, right? If, if the, you know, the U.S. negotiators are saying you have to denuclearize because you pose a threat to the U.S., to our allies, South Korea, Japan, and the president is saying, ah, oh, you're fine, you know, we don't really think you're a threat anymore. I've talked and we're friends and it's all going to be fine. That really undercuts, you know, his, uh, his State Department officials and the people who are trying to negotiate on their behalf. And that has been a problem for people who try to negotiate on behalf of President Trump. It is President Trump is, in, is unpredictable. He likes to shoot from the hip and he goes on gut and he goes a lot of times in these bilateral relations with what happens in the room. So you're never quite sure what he could agree to or what he could announce coming out of the summit and that might leave people who like the details men who have to actually make this happen scrambling to keep up or make it happen at the end of the day. All right the clock is ticking. Christina Ruffini. Christina thanks very much.